All right, guys, we're here. WSOP 1500 event, day two. We're going back now, 12 noon, 269 players left, 265 get paid, got around 74,000 in chips, average chip tax around 50,000, 395K for first, and that gold shiny bracelet. Hopefully, if things don't turn out too bad, I should be able to get in the money. And then from there, gotta run it up, get all the chips, and all the glory. Breakfast is a must before we go play some poker. typical black shirt why am I wearing green today oh I know why because at this point in the tournament we are in the money finally first WSOP event we're in the money so we're gonna pick up hands from this point on as we basically burst the bubble I think in half an hour or less so we're quickly in the money we only needed to have four players lose to get the 265 paid top 265 got paid so in this hand the blinds are 600 1200 and 200 ante and i looked down at a pair of nines in middle position uh i bet 2700 you know i like to bet a little bit more than two times no, no reason to bet big here with a pair of nines it's a strong hand um the button ends up shoving for 15k all in it folds back around to me and the choice is clear simple call the other player turns over his cards and he has king queen of clubs the board runs out three eight eight six five and we scoop the pot and we increase our stack to 90k approximately at this point in the tournament you know you gotta accumulate chips we're in the money we're playing for first place we're playing for that bracelet so i think uh anytime you got a pair and most people like to shove with ace highs or two high cards I mean, and for the amount of money, 15k, when my stack was around 70 something, you gotta make the call, and uh, you know, it was a flip, and we hold. This next hand, the blinds are 1k and 2k. So we're progressing in the tournament, we're starting to lose players, you know, 50, 60, 70 players have dropped out in, you know, the first couple levels of the day. Uh, the under the gun player ends up making a bet of 5500 and it folds around to me in the small blind and I look down at a glorious hand pocket kings the under gun player has only 30k total and he bet out 5500 it's a pretty clear choice here um, I'm basically gonna you know set them all in and I decide to shove and it folds back to him and he shoves his 30k stack in the middle at this point i'm putting him maybe on a pair maybe two high cards he ends up turning over ace king you can't blame him you know ace king short stack at this point in the tournament you got to go with it he only had 15 big blinds and the flop comes queen 10 oh no not a gut shot not a gut shot eight six three and we scoop. I wasn't that worried, it was just for drama. Uh, and then uh, we take the pot and our stack starts to go up, 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 and we're up to 140K with the blinds at 1K, 2K. So we have 70 big blinds and it's going well. And you know, we've been have laser focused the entire tournament. I feel like I'm playing some of the best poker I've ever played. And I'm also running good, which helps. At this point of the tournament, there's 60 players left, 
I'm assured 5,800. Things are going well, and the blinds are 3,000, 6,000 with a 500 ante. I'm in the small blind, and I look down at ace five of diamonds. Um, middle position player limps, folds around to me, and this is a hand where I think I can put in a raise, as I only have to worry about the big blind and the limper. So I make it 14k, the big blind folds, and the middle position player decides to come along and calls. The flop comes, pretty good flop. Jack, five, deuce, two diamonds. I flop middle pair, nut flush draw. On this type of flop, which I hit very hard, I'm looking to put in a continuation bet. So I bet 21,000, which is about, you know, a little more than two thirds pot around two thirds spot and the middle position player calls. At this point I'm putting her on, you know, maybe a pair of sevens, pairs of eights. Uh, she could have a jack, a hand like queen jack is a limp hand, king jack, maybe ace jack. Uh, but, you know, we have the nut flush draw, we have mid pair, we have the ace over card, so we're not going anywhere obviously. And, you know, it's better to put out a bet, you know, and get possible folds, but she calls and we're okay with that. The turn comes and it's a three of spades. This is actually a very good card for us because now we've added a gut shot to our hand. So we're gonna continue to fire at this uh, pot and we bump it up to 42K. So we raise our flop bet. We double it to 42K on the turn. And to our surprise, she calls again. So at this point, I'm thinking she may have a very strong hand. Maybe she does have a set at this point we're still okay with you know all the possibilities that we have we have a lot of cards that can help our our hand out and hoping that the river is a favorable river a diamond now if we hit a straight or a gut shot it doesn't even look like that's a possibility based on the fact that we bet the flop then the turn and the river if it comes running around a straight you know it may be even better than hitting the diamond so off to the river we go, and it is a four of spades. We hit the wheel. At this point, I just shove all in. I snap shove all in. Makes it look like a bluff. Makes it look like I missed my flush, which I did. And she calls. I proudly turn over my straight, and she turns over five, six of clubs for a higher straight. Are you kidding me? At this point, the stacks look very similar and I'm thinking I just busted this tournament. They count out the chips and I have a little bit more than her but I'm left with 19K. So I basically have a little bit more than three big blinds at this point and I'm just distraught. I'm just like, how did I, you know, three barrel every street, I hit the card I need and she just called with a pair of fives and a low kick around the flop. I mean, I know she got a gut shot on the turn, but uh, I don't know. I guess you want those calls. I mean, she hit the one of the few cards that she can hit to beat me, you know. But 19K, we got to keep fighting. We got to keep going. And, uh, you know, on to the next hand. So we lose a couple antes and basically I'm down to about 16K at this point pick up a pair of fives on the button and I basically shove all in the small blind folds and the big blind says he has about a 300k stack he goes doesn't really matter what I have and he calls he has king four and runs out clean and we double up to 32k 33k something like that and we're still super short I mean we now we have six bigs let's say uh, very next hand, I pick up ace queen. Easy, go all in again. I get a caller, queen nine. We double up. Couple orbits later, I have around 70k at this point. Pick up ace king. You know, the blinds at this point are 4,000, 8,000. So I have a 70k stack. There's a raise. I shove all in. I get called by ace jack. Board runs clean, ace high, ace king wins, no pairs, but I have a better kicker, and I'm up to 150k at this point, and 
literally I went from thinking I was out of the tournament to three straight double ups and I'm I'm back in it. I'm back in it. I still don't have a big stack. I still have a stack that I can be shoving because I don't have a lot of you know chips, but still, um, I'm very happy about that. There's about 40 people left. We're getting towards the end of day two. There's one more level after this. Blinds are still 4,000, 8,000 with a 1K ante. And I'm in the cutoff and I look down at Ace-10 of Diamonds. I have around 160 in my stack, 160,000 in my stack and clear shoving situation. I only got 16 big blinds. I end up making an all-in for my remaining stack and the button wakes up with pocket queens not ideal I don't think there's anything we could have done there we have a pretty strong hand so at this point we're gonna need a little luck will it happen let's find out the flop comes 10 8 4 we flop a pair of 10s we're still trailing turn is a 5 and the river is a 10. So we make trip 10s on the river. We stay alive. They count the chips. We're very close in chips, but I have them covered by about 15K. And we scoop the pot, we double up, and now we have over 30 big blinds and we can play poker. And that is a great way to suck out. And I'm happy I did. Sorry, the guy for the queens, but, uh, you know, sometimes you got to suck out. You can't always have the goods, you know. That's part of poker tournaments. You got to run good, play good. It's, to win one of these tournaments, you need... There's so much variance in these tournaments, so many players, and just, you know, you're going to have to get lucky sometimes. And it worked out that time, and late in day two, and, you know, we're getting close to bagging and tagging, and I'm super excited. level of the night the blinds are 5,000 10,000 and another the gun player makes a race to 25k I end up making the call on the button with ace four of hearts you know it's a call it's definitely a calling hand I could even come in for a three bet here as I'm in position but we're getting towards the end of day two you know I don't mind going to see a flop with this hand so I think uh, just calling is fine here and I make the call. The flop comes ace, deuce, five, two spades, I flop top pair, uh, there's a five of hearts so I have a runner runner for the nut flush and I have a gut shot. So the original person who bet pre-flop under the gun, he makes a bet to 30k, 30,000. And I end up calling, easy call, you know, I have a, like I mentioned, a couple possibilities on the turn that could really improve my hand. The turn comes and it's a three of clubs. The three of clubs gives me the wheel, uh, super strong hand, and I'm hoping he bets again here. And depending on what he bets, you know, I will see what line I take. He ends up making a bet of 55,000 when he only has 100k behind. So at this point, you know, he bet the flop, he bet the turn, he seems like he's committed, you know, if he double barreled and bet again with air, then, you know, I guess he'll just end up folding. So I decide to just go all in, put him to the test, uh, I go all in for 245k, which is my remaining stack, and he folds. So apparently he didn't have anything as he folded kind of quickly or he just thought he was beat and made a quick fold. So we're happy to take down that pot. And now we're over 400,000 in chips, getting close to the end of day two. So we have a nice healthy stack.
So we finished day two, still alive, 10th in chips out of 28 players left. We have 507,000, about half a million in chips, and we're still in this thing. And we're going to day three, the final day of this tournament. I'm super, 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 super excited. And, you know, whatever happens now, it's just, you know, it's, it's just great. I don't, I don't know what other way to say it. Like, I didn't even expect to get this far in my first World Series of Poker tournament. But, you know, let's keep it going. Let's keep winning. Let's keep taking down pots. Let's keep sucking out. Let's, it doesn't matter. Let's just keep enjoying the ride. And let's see how far we can get in day three. As always, I always tell you guys, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Please leave some comments down below in regards to, you know, particular hands, how you thought maybe you would have wanted to play them. Um, any comments really about my blog, about anything you guys want to comment, you know, leave comments. You know, I always read them and I always respond. And on to day three we go and be on the lookout for a very special day three vlog of the World Series of Poker event number 58, 1500. It's coming soon to a YouTube near you. Peace out.